Welcome everyone. We'll get started in just a minute um, once SLP logs on. Hello. Okay. Hey, everybody. There you go. Hello. 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 Thanks, Lolly, for organizing us yet again. This is Watch Me Work, where the me and the title is you. And if you don't know that, <laughs> I just told you. Um, and what do we do here? What have we been doing here? We've been doing Watch Me Work for like 12 years. We've been out in the lobby of the public theater. And um, we've since migrated to Zoom, uh, which is our happy place, because it's so great because we get to be at home, um, which is so fantastic. And we can meet together and see each other's faces. And what we do basically every week around this time, we work together for 20 minutes. And then I take questions from you about your creative process. Um, the creative process, yeah. So uh, if you have questions for me about your creative process, which you'll be invited to ask me after the 20 minute work session, Lolly is going to tell you how to get in touch. Go girl. So if you're here in the Zoom room with us, uh, you can use the raise your hand function, which is in the reactions tab, which is likely at the bottom of your screen. If you have any trouble finding it, you can just send me a message in the chat and I'll help you out. If you're watching the live stream on HowlRound, feel free to send us your questions via the Public Theater's Twitter or Instagram accounts, or via the Watch Me Work Twitter account, which is at Watch Me Work SLP with the hashtag HowlRound. That's hashtag H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D. So that's how you ask a question. All right, thank you very much. And again, yes, yeah, so thank you to uh, the Public Theater and thank you to HowlRound, which also makes this wonderful community possible. So we are going to look around like, what am I gonna work on today? Um, here's our 20 minutes, here we go. And we'll see you in 20 minutes.
Hello, hello. Okay, we're back. And here's the moment when we take questions. The moment, the 40 minutes. Looks like Melania has a question. Melania, how you doing, sister? Hello, Susan, I'm doing well. Today is my birthday, so I'm doing- Today is your birthday? <laughs> Happy birthday. Oh, how Thank lucky we are to celebrate your birthday with you. Happy birthday. Yes, yes I am very happy. And I say, today, you watch me work. I want to do it in my birthday. Also. All right. Fantastic. Yes. Um, Susan, let's see. I would like to know, uh, my question is about sharing the work. No? Yeah. You know that I show up to my work and... I like to, to do some workshops and I participate, but generally right. when I, I am in these workshops, then the notes come and I have these mixed feelings about when the teachers give me the notes. Right. Some things are good, I can understand. Others, I feel a little sensitive about. So I, there is something about my work that I feel I have some issues with the boundaries between myself and the work. Right. I, I put so much of my soul in what I do and I try to show up. And sometimes it's, it's a lot of work for me because, you know, family life. And so when someone maybe comes and says something about what they receive, I, it's tough for me to separate you know, the the note from the they are talking about me and oh yeah logically i know i am not the work the work is one thing and i am a person but at the time of when i am doing this there is a lot of mixed feelings so right. i would like to ask you if you have some strategies to separate to have boundaries between the the work the effort that the work you know that i put in the work right. And at the same time, being able to read the note in a good way, the note under the note as you. As right, you. right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Because I am working and I am trying, but there is something about the, the work that is very personal to me. There is kind of a refuge, you know, in mm -hmm. the middle of writing mm -hmm. and having mm -hmm. my time. But at the same time, I want to share what I do. Right. So right. I am trying to, to, to navigate that those water how how can i do yeah that's a great that's a great question i think it can help us help everybody in this room right now um i i uh, I, I would say it, it's it's helpful to me to when somebody's giving me notes i'm writing them down do you do that uh, yes, I, I, I try. Yes, sometimes they come uh, written, so I read them. Oh, sometimes, oh, oh, sometimes they just come written. Ah, I see. Okay, okay, okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, fair enough. That's I, I, I see what you mean. If they come back in an email or, or whatever. Yes, exactly. Okay, fair enough. Um, hmm. I would say maybe sometimes read the notes out loud. Uh-huh. That helps. Kind of, I'm just saying get some like some distance yes. between you know. Um and, and the well, the first thing I want to say really is that giving notes is a highly developed skill that not everybody who gives notes possesses. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's the real it's I I I mean. I mean, some people, you know, think that because they're, you know, running the class, you know, which they deserve to run and all that, and they and they have opinions that giving notes, that they're, they're good at giving notes. Not everybody's good at giving notes. That's that's one thing that's just true. It's just true. Like, not every medical doctor is a great medical doctor, mm. and I dare say that most medical doctors have gone through more years of training than most writers who are giving other writers notes right 
Okay, not every lawyer is good. Not every politician is good. <laughs> like across the board, right? Not everybody in our field is as good as we might, as good as we might need. Okay, um, so that that's one thing to know. So not every note is going to going to yeah, buoy your spirits and make you want to go forward and write, okay. right? Um, which is what I would what. And so I do this little trick when I hear a note. So I play this little game. I go, while every note giver is not, you know, as good as I might want, I play this game. All notes are great. Okay. That's right. I, every note's a great note. Now, what does that do? It's just make me go, it's all good. It's all going to help me. It's all going to help me get to where I want to go. Right? Okay. Even if somebody says, and I've had people say, uh, you know, some of the, pardon my language, stupidest shit you can possibly say about anybody's work to me. Oh, my goodness. Did they just say that to me? Oh, yes. Oh, they just did. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness gracious. You know what I mean? Okay. They, people said, even as, uh, as early as, you know, two, three weeks ago. Wow. So I just go, every note's a good note, <laughs> which kind of takes their claws away from them because sometimes people are trying to do harm, you know, like, you know, and you have to go, every note's a great note because you're helping me get to where I want to go. Okay. Okay. So it's helpful to read the note. If you get the notes written, it's helpful to read them out loud. Okay. You might want to copy them down in your notebook in your own hand. Hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Digest them. You know, write them down, copy them, copy them down. That might sort of help you sort of get your head around them, you know? Um, and I mean, in a way, the, you know, we know, yeah, we know the notes aren't us, um, but they feel personal, you know? You also might think, well, this person, hopefully, hopefully, even if the person gives a, 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 a note that's not helpful or doesn't feel helpful, you can tell yourself, this person is trying to help me. Mm. That's what I do sometimes, too. Yeah, this person. My yoga teachers over the years, great yoga teachers. I've had some really fantastic yoga teachers. They say, um, they say good teacher, bad adjustment. So sometimes when they try to, you know, move your body in a certain way and you go, ah, you know, they're like, oh, that is just, well, oh, you know, they're trying to help you, but they twist you in a way that makes you go, eh, that hurts. <laughs> you, know, like that. you know, so good teacher, bad adjustment sometimes. Um, yeah, be believe that they're trying to help you. Okay. Um, yeah, write them in your own hand. Tell yourself every note is good. Okay. I will. I will. I Happy am. Ah, oh, thank you. Thank I'm you. Eight. You're eight, eight. What a great day to have a birthday. I know. When I turned when I turned 10, you know, it was eight, eight, eighty-eight. Oh, and right. I, I remember being a little girl, being so mad because I wanted to be eight on that date, but I was 10. Oh. It oh, was oh. a question of you know. <laughs> Uh, yes, eight, eight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, wow, that's so great. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And thank you for your help. This is very helpful to me. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Melania. Thank you, Lali. Oh, another question. Here we go. Hey, Crystal. How are you doing? Hi. It's a little crazy. If you hear some crying, that's one of my nephews. <laughs> Did you move? I, you said you had to move. Well, we have we have um, we have six months, and then we have to see what happens after that. Gee, that's kind of crazy making. Feels yeah, like yeah, it totally is. It totally is. But I'm like, you know what? Like, we're gonna end up where we belong. We kind of have to, <laughs> for the sake of our family and our children. We're we're gonna we're gonna have a home. We just don't know where that home will be, you know? So yeah, it's still very nuts, um, but we're, we're like, 
It was a lot more shocking when I first told you. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, good. Okay. okay. We're, we're slowly, you know, breathing through it. <laughs> wow. Wow. You're handling it with grace. Good for you. Oh, Lord. Thank you. <laughs> um, so my question um, was kind of like Melania's in the sense that when we last spoke or when I last um, asked the question, it was about um, revision um, because of what the person was saying and how I should consider um, looking at the script as to what can I do to make it tighter mm -hmm. or to bring things closer, you know, um, or sooner uh, and earlier in the in the film. And I, you know, I was going through the revision process. I remember you, um, you know, like I was doing it like one page at a time writing, you know, different things. And I kind of felt like, am I, I kind of felt like I was writing like new things instead of like, I don't know what I was looking for or if I was supposed to have an intention in the revision process. Cause I felt like, oh, I was like, oh, I could add this element. Oh, I could add this too. I. I could kind of add this, why not, you know? And I kind of felt like I was like, am I just, what am I doing? <laughs> I didn't trust myself as, as, as someone to give my own notes as to how to write and um, not how to write, but how to make the story tighter. It was more like, oh, how do I expand? Which was one of the things I was thinking about for when I write it as a feature. Right. Um, but as the as the short itself, I kind of was like, what am I just adding things just to add or like I just I really like question what what that process was supposed to be, you know, um, and looking at it, I was like, I think I think it was fine. But then I'm like, maybe I don't know. Mm -hmm. I hear what you're saying. If I remember correctly, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. They were suggesting that you add some sex or some violence. Yes. <laughs> okay, I remember. Right, 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 right. Yeah. yeah. So that's kind of that was kind of like, yeah, yeah. That makes it tricky. That makes it tricky because it throw it does throw you off your instincts, right? Yes. Uh, with a sort of one size fits all solution which I, I don't know if that's it did, and because it didn't feel right I was feeling like it wasn't the right thing for you to do right but it felt right you were on yeah great they should have a sex scene here of right. violence and it would have been fine but because right. it doesn't feel right right so yeah so now you're at the point where I want to add something you want to tighten it up I'm, I'm not saying add things necessarily but but raise the stakes like like um Let's see if someone's um, coming over to visit someone. Let's just say if it's a scene, let's just make something up where someone's coming to visit somebody, right? Uh -huh. And they come over and it's like, ding dong, hi, how are you? Oh, great, come on in, sit down. Say that's the scene, right? Now let's say, let's raise the stakes. Ding dong, hi, it's really not a good time right now because my nephew is crying. He's you see what I mean? But I have to come in because we made this appointment and this is a real time when I'm supposed to check out your your home because I'm from, uh, I don't know, I'm from the daycare center and I have to evaluate you as a parent. You see what I mean? Yeah. We added stuff, but we didn't just, we didn't just add stuff. Like just adding stuff would be ding dong. Oh, hi, I'm making chicken soup. Why don't you come sit down? That's just adding stuff. You right. see what I mean? We add it, we intensify the act, the, the circumstances. Okay. You see, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. We made it. And if you think of it in terms of like, uh, uh, pushing maybe like to up the stakes means that you want one character to be pushing harder. So ding dong, the doorbell rings. I have to come in, right? I have to come in now because I'm from the daycare center and I have to evaluate you as a parent because we wonder if you're suitable to let in our school. We're dialing it up, right? You can't come in now because my nephew is having a meltdown and that will make me look like a bad parent. Okay. 
he, so the, so one character's pushing in, one character's pushing back. That's upping the circumstances. It's not just adding stuff. Okay, that makes total sense. Because it, it's funny you say that because in in this you know romantic film or whatever, it's um one of the characters re- keeps visiting, keeps coming to the main character's house. Right. Give her like a a, a very uh, uh, practical no gift. Um, so a very practical. What? I didn't hear you. A practical gift, like um, like a pan, and, right? Um, you know things like that. But I I can see now, like oh maybe maybe it might be a little too easy for her. There you go. Right. Right. Yeah. It's too easy. Every time he, every time person A rings the doorbell, person B is available and ready to receive the gift. Mm-hmm. No, but make it a little harder. You know. Okay. Make it, or even make it harder for person A to have gotten to the door the second time. They're in Kentucky. There's a flood. Oh my God! You know what? I had to get here. Yeah. <laughs> Uber. Blood it out, or there, you know, and I had to get a boat, and then, you know, whatever. I mean, what, yes, add stuff, but add stuff to push to make it harder to achieve to, 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 to achieve the goal. Okay. Right? Yeah. Okay. I can work on that. Um, piece of cake. <laughs> I just have to sweat blood. That's all. <laughs> I, did, I don't know. Well, yeah, maybe you did. If, if you like doing that, you know. <laughs> uh, Thank you so much. You're welcome so much. <laughs> Any other questions? Feel free to raise your. Oh, Timothy. Hey, Timothy. Hello. Hello, Timothy. How are you? We're doing well today. How you doing, man? I'm doing all right, I guess. Um, I've um, I've asked something similar to this in earlier sessions, but I've spent most of this year uh, rewriting a lot of stuff, and it's been fairly productive. Mm-hmm. Um, but I really want to work on something new. But. <laughs> But the yeah, I know you'd think. Um, but the cupboard is kind of bare, and I was wondering, or you know, do you have? Someone said, "Oh, well, you know, they suggested some kind of exercise or whatever, and see if that would spark an idea or whatever." And, and they've kind of been like, some are better than others, but um. Um, I just didn't, I was wondering, uh, you know, when you look at the wall and the wall is bare, uh, is there anything you kind of do to overcome that? Sure, sure. Um, sure. And, and maybe these are, this might be just repeats of what you've heard already, but let's see if we can think of things. Um, mm-hmm. I love making, I love making lists. So I make a list of like 10 stupid things that I'd like to write about. You know, they have to be okay. stupid. They have to be stupid, though. They have to be, they can't be like, oh, all right, you know, no, stupid, stupid, stupid. They have to be stupid. Because if they're stupid, then you're going to let your guard down. Hmm. And look over the list and you go, oh, actually, I, I, I kind of like that one. You know what I mean? So they have to be stupid. Or you can also do like five things that you, you, you really have always wanted to write, but you don't really think you can. Like, you know, like five things that you put on your bucket list that you, you don't really think you're going to get to. Like, I, I wish I could write a, a song, but I don't really think I'm good at that. Yeah, so put that on the list, you know, right? Because you might, you might be seeing a bare cupboard or bare wall because you really, you, you're, it's difficult to face what you really want to do. You know, huh. so you're not seeing it, you know what I mean? You know, you're just not seeing it. Um, so, so five things or even 10 things. So 10 stupid, let's make them 10, 10 stupid things, 10 things that you really want to write, but you don't think you can. Okay. Or you say 10 things that you never think you could write, you know, 
Maybe you're a novelist, you want to write a play. Maybe you're a playwright, you want to write a novel. Maybe you want to write a comic strip. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm right. I mean, woo, maybe you want yeah. that, that's uh, fun, you know, uh, you know, and tend to meaning you really want to write meaning that you think would be fun. You know, that would be fun, but I could never do that. You want to write a song, you know, or see a song cycle and that would be fun, but I am playing an instrument, you know, whatever, whatever it is um, that could help. What else? Um, you could go to your, I don't know, assuming you have books, you know, not everybody does these days, but say, you know, books on a shelf, you could go to your bookshelf and go, I really write, want to write something like that. You know, like this is something I love. I really want to write something like that. And whatever it is, maybe it's a book of lyrics. Maybe it's a, a nonfiction book. Maybe it's a book on, you know, gut microbes. That's what I was reading the other day. You know, whatever, you know, like a history book um, mm -hmm. on a subject that you've always found interesting. Maybe it's a book of essays, you know, so look on your bookshelf. Your bookshelf might, you know, your bookshelf is going to tell you what you love. You love them enough to bring them home and live with them after all those books. And it might give you a clue to what you want to create yourself, you know, Um you could also do it by by genre. If I could write songs, what would I write about? You know, if I could write essays, what would I write about? You could do that. You know, different, different. If I want to write a, maybe I want to write a, a, a pilot for a TV show. That would be fun. What would that be like? Mm -hmm. You know, so there's, I could go on and on. There's, <laughs> please, really, please I mean, do. <laughs> I, just, I just think, just start making lists of things. Like yeah. this yeah, is yeah, what yeah. I'd like. I'd love to write a TV show. What would a pilot for my TV, the TV show that I always want to watch. I turn on the TV if you do at all or your computer mm -hmm. or whatever. And I sit there and I'd love to see a show about whatever. And it's not on. Why isn't it on? Cause I haven't written it yet. So, so why don't I, you know, I'd love to see a show about blah, blah, blah. That could be fun. You could write a TV pilot and then you could, you know, that, that could be a lot of fun to write a TV pilot. And they're only like 50 pages long or 20 pages long if it's a sitcom. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So. Cool. Okay. That's super helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Timothy. Good question. Thanks. Thanks, Timothy. Uh, does anybody else have questions? Feel free to raise your hands. We've got about... 14 minutes left, so plenty of time for a couple of questions. Oop, looks like Louise has one. Hold on, I'm muted. Hey, you, I think you should be able to, yeah, there you go. Okay, I don't really have a question yet, but I have a comment. Okay. Um, I um, was recommended to the group uh, back in 2020, during the okay. pandemic, and um, I was thrilled. <laughs> and uh, but I just wanted to say that um, when you had your show about the pandemic at the public theater at Joe's mm -hmm. Pub, mm -hmm. I I was so overwhelmed. And my thoughts were, because I've heard you give, you know, parcel out advice. And one of the things that you say is when people have questions is the whole process of writing it out, of just getting it out, just letting it flow. And when um, I saw your show, that's what it felt like. I said to myself, oh, she, practice what she preaches because it was such an outpouring of all of this material that you had experienced about the pandemic and it was so powerful. Add on to that, I loved your singing. Oh, thank you. I loved your music, absolutely loved your music. And then the third thing is you mentioned 
um, a really shero of mine, Robbie McCauley. And I just, that was just, I just lost it then. And um, so I felt I had to say something. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Robbie McCauley, for those of you who, who don't know her, um, is a brilliant, or well, was because she passed away, uh, was a brilliant writer, a brilliant performer, um, and a very kind and righteous uh, person. Um, and uh, I mean, did you meet her when you were, are you in New York, Louise? Or in New York, and I knew her from back in the day. I knew her when she did For Colored Girls, when it went to Broadway. However, she also did a lot of experimental stuff. And one piece in particular that was one of the best works I've seen in New York, and I've seen a lot, was My Father and the Wars. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. it was just, you know, it's about her father and him fighting the war and the family traveling through the South. And then mm -hmm. I know she also did Sally's Rape, mm -hmm. for which I believe she won an Emmy, but she was just an amazing, amazing person. And when we mentioned her, I just, you know, I lost it. <laughs> so, she was so wonderful. And um, I knew her when she was uh, hanging out at... Uh, uh, D down in the East Village, and uh, she worked with um, a mentor of mine, Lori Carlos and Jessica yes. Hagedorn. Uh, um, uh, they had a group called Thought Music, right? Is that there? Is that am I get right? I want to get it right. And she and Je and uh, Robbie has a daughter um, whose first name is Jesse. Jesse Montgomery. Yes, Jesse Montgomery, who's a vi who's a brilliant violinist. And a composer also. Um, uh, anyway. Yeah, so I just had to say that. Oh, Next time you. I'll pose a question about my oh, writing. Yeah. I just I had to get that in. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. Yeah, loved her, loved her very much. Uh, I just put in the chat, we have about 10 minutes left. So feel free to raise your hand if you have a last question or two. Anyone? Here we go. I have a question. I hey. do wonder if you ever are doing something and you find you start out to do it on one thing and then as you're writing, it switches to something else different because that <laughs> has been happening to me. I was writing right. something on horror and then it switched to sci-fi and then it switched to something else. And I was like, wait a second, what's going on here? Right, right. Yeah, yeah, things, things can definitely uh, change up. Usually um, for me, they don't change the kind of thing they are, but they might, the, the tone might change. But you said you started, it was horror and then it switched to sci-fi, is that what you said? Yes, and I think they can be related. I do think they can be related, but then it switched to something else. And I said, okay, concentrate, concentrate. And because I wanted to come back to horror because somebody had said to me that if you are doing a film, uh, horror is the one, the easiest thing that you can get funded, which made sense to me. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, because, I look, you don't have to have a name, you know, a big name. Sci-fi, you have to have a lot of uh, technical stuff. So that's expensive. Mm -hmm. um, but horror you could do just about anything for horror and right. it happened I sat down you know in one of these sessions to write and I started writing horror and then I was telling this friend and that's what she said and that, that gave me something to think about uh -huh. and today uh -huh. as I was writing it kept switching 
It was like my mind was just almost like wandering different places. Well, but maybe you're just expanding on what you're writing about. I mean, the other thing is, is it a is it a screenplay or is it a novel or what what kind of? Well, it's it's a script for you know for <laughs> film. Okay, okay, that would explain because you said that right. You can you have to have all this technical stuff, so that that makes sense. Because if you wrote it as a short story or a novel, it could just be in the mind of the. You know, sometimes sometimes things do switch and change and morph into other things. I my thing is though that I I don't really write in what would you say um genre what would you call that sci-fi horror genre. i just write, what would you call it i'd call it genre genre right yeah. i don't really write like that so mm -hmm. when i write something it is whatever it is you know what i mean yeah. um and if yours is switched from interesting enough not needing a lot of technical elements to needing more technical elements and that's how you why you call it sci-fi Maybe it's just a horror film with lots more technical elements. See what I'm saying? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Because um, I think I think if, as long as you're writing, telling the story, keeping focused on the characters, um, that you're doing the work, you know? Um, and I think maybe it's just telling you, the story is telling you more about what it needs. Mm -hmm. um, okay. You know, and, that, and that's okay. I think it, as long as you're focused on the characters and what they're doing and what they want and, you know, kind of the, the, the story, then I think, I think it's okay. Um, I, I'm just trying to think of an, a, an example of that. Um, some things start out very simple and then as the story grows, it gets more technically complicated, you should say, but that doesn't mean it's switch genres. It's just expanding its scope. Yeah. Um, okay. I was um, just curious to know what, you know, what you thought about it or anyone else. If, uh, you know, if you've kind of had that experience of something you're writing switches and switches. Sure. We can open it up. Has anybody had that experience of their writing and get some heads nodding? Yeah, raise your hand, how about, and then I can unmute you if you want to speak to it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that I feel like that happens more than I'd like it to. <laughs> like in your mind, you have it. Like it's it's like you have it a certain way, and then you know, draft after draft, it kind of sh morphs or molds into something a little mm -hmm. different than what it, what you what you started in your mind and. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing though. I mean, unless you have like a super sharp pointed vision that like can't be compromised. I think if you, if you have like a willing a willingness to grow with your story, then then it's it's okay. I think. Oh, well said. Yeah, thank you. Sure. Uh, Kat, you had do you have a question you want to comment on that? Um, a comment I wanted to say that uh, I never know what it is uh, on the, at the outset. Um, my process I've said is like winnowing um, because I start with a very, very wide scope of things that I believe that I believe are related mm -hmm. and that I don't necessarily know exactly the dynamic of the relationship yet. And um, so it'll be a smattering of characters and scenes and images and facts, like <laughs> and pictures, and um, and then I, yeah, I winnow, I winnow the fault as I go, and it reveals me because for me, writing is a tool of, of exploration and and um, a tool of uh, learning and knowledge. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's cool. That's way cool. Timothy, did you have something to say on that too? Uh yeah, just real quick. Um I've I've had plays turn into films and films turn into plays all the time. I mean, you know, and and a lot of times I'm resistant 
because it's like you know i really wanted to write a play you know <laughs> so, um you know um but you know i had a, I had a teacher tell me sometimes you just got to go where the story takes you and um you know what you know whether certainly a horror film and i you know you were you, whoever told you that about horror is 100 percent correct i have a friend of mine who directs horror films and that you can you know if, the, if you wanted to go that way then that's a that's a fairly lucrative avenue um but i would kind of just write the story and you know if it ends if you know people are getting butchered then you got a horror film if they go you know something else happens then maybe you got a sci-fi i mean you know it's the story's yours right so, yeah, this is all very helpful so i just oh, want cool. to thank everybody for you know the comments and you know and um yeah, it's extremely helpful. So thank you. And thank okay. you. This is really, really good. Sure. It's a good that, yeah. I love that. I love the ways of looking at it. We got to go where the story takes us and the, the writing is an act of self-discovery and, and it happens all the time. Yeah, I think that's really, really, really helpful. That's me. Yeah. Thank you all for those insights. It's six, yeah. <laughs> um, that was a, a wonderful like last sharing session though from everybody. Um, oh. oh, so I am the host now. Am I the host now? I am the host now. Okay. Um, uh, I think Lolly pushed a button and made put me in charge. So uh, we love you. We'll see you next week, which is the 15th. Yeah, I think. And I think um, definitely tell your friends and family to, to show up because going into the fall, we're going to take a little bit of a hiatus as I run around uh, like a busy person. Um, but uh, we'll see you next week at 5 p.m. Uh, thank you. Love you. See you next time. Okay. Bye-bye.